and buy me Beatles fans should be on the lookout for the new book Can't Buy Me Love, a take by author Jonathan Gould, which hits stores on October 2nd. With a proliferation of books on the Fab Four on shelves, Gould has focused on their music and the socio-political climate that not only influenced the band, but also influenced what was known as the hysterical reaction by little girls called Beatlemania. Gould was asked why when the question of making the book was posed. The common denominator, the common feature of most of the biographical writing about the Beatles was that it tended to take the music for granted. It tended to, to, to sort of approach the subject by, with, with a sort of attitude that says, well, we all know this music. I sort of approached it in exactly, I suppose, the opposite way. I, wanted, I began by wanting to write about the Beatles' music. The next question that really sort of, sort of became obvious was, this was the music. Why did this music have such an extraordinary effect on so many people? As a musician, you do what you do, and you hope people are going to like it. In the case of the Beatles, they did what they did, and vast numbers of people not only liked it, but responded to it in ways that were truly extraordinary and truly startling. Not just the, the, the extent, not just the numbers, but the intensity of people's reaction to it. He was also asked about the 2007 view of the controversial statement by John Lennon that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus. And the general thrust of the coverage in the American media was that what Lennon had said, first of all, was true, or more or less true. As a, as a young, rebellious kid at that time uh, in America, I assume that the reason that people were, some people were reacting so, so sort of angrily to it was that uh, it was true and they didn't like hearing it and they especially didn't like hearing it from some long-haired English pop musician in that way. And when what we thought of as the mainstream media in America was surprised and talked about the reactions of people in the South and people in the Bible Belt and so on and so forth, I think what was coming onto the radar screen of mainstream America at that time was not just the counterculture, which was one thing which was creeping onto the, onto, as I say, onto the radar screen of, of the media, but also what we think of as the evangelical or the fundamentalist Christian right. Gould was asked if there could be another Beatlemania situation in 2007 and examines how the band would hold up today. It's very difficult to, to think about how the Beatles would fare now because the, the whole entertainment, celebrity, slash po politic world of, of, of all of these things are so interwoven, are so combined now, that it's almost impossible pr to predict whether this sort of a group from that sort of a place could show up on anybody's radar screen. Even something like, like the fact that they were able to come over to, the, to America and appear on the Ed Sullivan Show and basically become known by everybody at that time. There's no real equivalent to the Ed Sullivan Show now. Uh, there are so many different uh, channels. There are so many different shows. There are so many different outlets. In those days, it was very, it was very narrow. And if you could get somebody in that position and they had something going for them, they had a real, a real chance of coming to almost everybody's attention at the same time. It's different now. It took Gould over 20 years of research to put the historical and musical points of the book together, and it is available via Crown Publishing for $27.50.